Today we are going to discover a fourth dimension to good character integrity, and that is the dimension of embracing the negative. In other words, when problems arise in your life, those negative realities, how will you and I deal with them? Remember, integrity is having the courage to meet the demands of the reality around us, and good integrity demands that we not create fantasies about what is happening around us or believe things the way we wish them to be. Integrity is about wholeness. It's about character growth. It's about seeing things as they really are and dealing with them. Now, if you remember, that first dimension of integrity of the six is connecting authentically with other people. We talked about establishing and maintaining trust. The second dimension of integrity, we learned, is always being oriented toward the truth. You see, it's more than just honesty. It's knowing and seeking the truth about ourselves and, and others and the world around us. And then last week, we explored the third dimension of good character integrity, getting results. We learned that there's more God wants us to do in getting results than just working harder or working smart. Until I dug into this thing about integrity, I never knew it involved so many dimensions. But these are dimensions that, that certainly make sense if, if we want to be persons of good integrity and, and to be the whole person that God wants us to be. And so today we will learn that part of life and success is facing and dealing with and resolving negative reality. Well, much more about that in a moment, but first, would you pray with me? Lord God, every day in our lives we are dealt with negative things around us, but it's how we deal with them that really shows our maturity and our growth. And so, Lord God, I ask today that you take these words of mine and mold them and shape them any way you wish so they become your words, both for our hearing and our doing. In your son Jesus' name, amen. There are problems with anything in life, and unfortunately, that includes anything good. You see, even a good idea will have its problems. A good marriage will have its difficulties. A good company will have struggles. People and markets and organizations and ourselves will have issues that must be resolved in order for a good result to take place. People with integrity face these issues and have the character makeup to resolve them. They are free from the character issues that get in the way of getting to the other side of, of negative, negative occurrences and realities. Folks, I've soon discovered that everything we do will have problems. You must surely remember that in the Garden of Eden, everything was perfect. We did not have to deal then with the knowledge of good and evil. We just existed, loved, and worked. We were caretakers over everything God had given us. But now, unfortunately, things are different. Literally everything that we do, touch, be involved in, try, know, or experience will be affected by the negative reality of a fallen, imperfect world. Romans 8.22 says, We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Paul said that almost 2,000 years ago. And it's still true today, isn't it? And Ecclesiastes 7.20 reminds us that there is not a righteous man or woman on earth who does what is right and never sins. People of integrated or whole character embrace and understand these realities. They're not fighting it, but have come to embrace it and to accept it and to deal with it. That means when problems come, they are not surprised. They're not shocked. They do not give up. 
They are not afraid thinking that the sky is falling. They just see it as, as one more day in making all of it work to the glory of God. In his book on integrity, Dr. Henry Cloud tells the story of a hospital company for which he was a consultant. As he was sitting in their conference room with some of the executives, he noticed a huge banner on the wall that said, No problems, no profits. This mantra assumes that if the company was not having any problems, then they were not working or doing what they were in business to do. This company wanted its management to understand that in moving forward and generating more business on the way to success is to see problems as normal and to get busy at solving them. You see, people of integrity will not deny or avoid problems, but they face into them directly. They are not people of denial, avoiding the proverbial elephant in the room. That is, acting as if some big issue does not exist. They actively move to face and deal with problems, and many of those problems include people. This character ability to not deny or avoid problems is really rooted in our God, who as soon as the universe fell, actively went to Adam and Eve, dealt with a problem, and came up with a redemptive solution. Listen to Genesis 3, 8 through 9. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? God went proactively and did not wait for the problem to resolve itself. In the same way, he tells us to be proactive about facing and solving problems in our own lives. First, people of good character integrity are able to recover from setbacks quickly and get back in the saddle, as they say. Proverbs 24 says this, Though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again, but the wicked are brought down by calamity. People who are mature or complete can deal with problems well because they don't go down for the count when life hits them hard. This doesn't mean that, that they're not affected by bad news or loss or failure or grief. What it does mean is that they have the wherewithal to recover well. And this is rooted in being full of grace and support and wisdom and faith and a relationship with God. In summary, it's about having built a life that is rooted in the ways of God. Jesus knew that, that people needed to organize their lives in the ways about which he talked and taught, so that when the hard times came, they would not be done in. Peter was one of Jesus' closest companions, and he had a solid foundation in the teachings of the Lord. But he failed Jesus at one of the darkest hours in Christ's life by denying him three times. However, even though he felt guilt, Peter did not go down for the count. Christ gave him the chance to redeem himself by declaring his love for Jesus not once, but three times. Peter recovered well and went on to spread the gospel to thousands of people. Peter dealt with his setback. He recovered quickly, and he brought even more glory to God. Second, people of integrity are able to deal with failure and problems well because they are separate from their results. They do not identify themselves and who they are by how they are doing. They are not the same as their results. You see, they don't have a performance identity. Instead, their identities and feelings of security come from being loved by God and loved from others and their own character integrity. That way, if something fails, they move on because it's not who they are. 
They are not a failure because of some bad results. When Tiger Woods hits a ball out of bounds or loses a tournament, he is not a failure. He's not tied to that result. Instead, he is still Tiger, and he will come back to play well once again. Paul says this in Colossians 2. He says, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. And then third, excuse me, people of integrity take ownership of their problems so that they can resolve them. Immature people are not as interested in solving solving their problems. You know what? I did it again. Here we go. Are not interested in solving their problems as they are in blaming others and avoiding responsibility or work. So instead of taking ownership, they excuse problems or they blame someone else. Mature people are not as concerned about who is at fault as they are about solving the problem. Even if they didn't cause the mess, They'll take ownership for the result, and and they'll get busy to fix it. God did not cause the fall of the earth that we read about in Genesis. But he, see, he, he put his arms around the problem, and he fixed it. A CEO might not have caused a bad market, but a good CEO will take ownership of the poor results of the company and move to fix it. He'll just not sit there and blame the market. He will fix the problems. A parent with a child who is not performing well will not just blame the teacher or the school. The parent will care about the problem and take ownership of it and fix it. And with problems where one is at fault, the person of integrity owns the fault. He confesses it and works to make it better. He does not shift blame trying to preserve some good self to himself or others. Not owning a problem (laughs) is nothing new. The first two people that did not own their problem were Adam and Eve. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. And we know the rest of the story. Then fourth, the person of integrity confronts problems well, becoming a force for redemption instead of destruction. This means that when a person of integrity confronts others, they do it actively, but they also do it fruitfully. They do it like God does, not to destroy the person, but to redeem him or her. They do it like God does, with a combination of grace and truth. You see, some people confront with truth only, and as a result, they destroy the person. They're harsh, they're mean, they're shaming, they're angry or abusive. This does not produce a good result. Others confront with a lot of grace, but do not deliver all of the truth. And they go too soft on how bad the problem really is. You see, God comes forth in his character with both total love and total truth and deals with the problem. Listen to Galatians 6. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore them gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. And then fifth, the person of integrity can let the bad stuff go. This means that he or she does not let problems or failures continue on by holding grudges and unforgiveness and labeling people after there has been a problem And that problem has been dealt with. The person of integrity grieves the issues. That that is, deals with his or her feelings, forgives, puts the person back in a debt-free standing, and then moves on. They build a bridge and get over it, as some people say. In managing people or being married, having friends or parenting, this is one of the most important things that we can do. Everyone will fail us. When we have dealt with it, we have to let it go for things to become good again and progress past the problem. 
We cannot keep someone in the doghouse. We have to let go of the bitterness for the person to thrive past failure and for our relationship to be restored. We have to stop the punishment at some point. This is certainly rooted in the God of grace who forgives us and then calls us to do the same. Listen to Psalm 103. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. And then lastly, the best way to deal with negative reality is to never have it in the first place. This means that, that people of integrity avoid a lot of problems by their strength of character in saying no. Hear that? In saying no to the things that are not good for them. They do not go forward into things that do not feel right. They don't smell right. Or with not so good people, are harebrained or whatever. If something is wrong with it, they just say no. And then they can walk away. God's word guides us and protects us from having a lot of problems as we follow it. We also develop the character that he asks us to in his word as well as strengthen our relationship with him. Turn mine eyes away from worthless things, says Psalm 119. Preserve my life according to your word. Here's the bottom line with negative realities or problems. We can face the problems and negative realities that come into our lives and exist in the world around us and thrive. Or we can choose not to face them and have them destroy us. It's as simple as that. The first to face the problems is more difficult in the beginning, but it leads to life and profits and fruitfulness and love and other good things. The second, not facing problems is easier in the beginning, but it leads to horrible things and ultimately destruction in the end. There are two ways. Easy first, hard later, or hard first, easy later. God's way is to face problems now and then thrive in the end. As we grow spiritually and acquire these certain character abilities, our mature integrity will help us to resolve those negative realities in our life in the strength and the ways of the one who always did it best, our God in heaven and his son Jesus Christ here on earth. Lord God, help us to hear these words of yours today. Help us to know that our character, our character integrity depends upon our relationship with you and, and following those things that Jesus taught us. Lord, help us to live with you in control so that we can deal with the negative realities that will ultimately come our way and that we can deal with them effectively and with reality and with truth and with grace. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.